So I wanted to share with you a little project I did <coughs> using a few of the software tools out there available and um, <coughs> owning uh, electric vehicle Tesla specifically. They had some APIs and uh, you know we could I wanted to see if we could uh, use that in that API and these tools, software tools that you track vehicle information and data and program commands. Um, these are actually available in third-party applications, uh, but I want to see uh, if I could do that without relying on these third-party applications, and I can explain a little bit more why later. Um, but you know, for things like, for example, to remind me if I forget to plug in the car, which is really mostly my wife, um, it's uh, you could track mileage, efficiency, um, and and the big reason is I actually wanted a feature, which again is available. I think in some off-market or third-party tools. Um, and no reason why Tesla can't do it at some point, but just probably hasn't um, been a priority for them, is to really uh, set it so that I can complete it to charge. You can set it to complete, you know, to charge at a certain percentage, like 50%, 70%, all the way up to 100%. Um, and right now you can schedule charging. It starts right away, or you can schedule it at a particular location to start at a certain time. Um, but I wanted to finish at a certain time versus start at a certain time. So what that's, some people call that smart charging. And the reason for that is, um, <clears throat> you know, as I, I've heard from battery chemistry or battery experts say that uh, you don't want to leave the, the batteries at a high state of charge for a prolonged period of time. It likes to be at a balanced state, like 50-50. Um, but if you charge it up, you should try to use it immediately. So the point is that you want to charge it up to that percentage you need for the day, whatever, 70, 80, 90 percent, 100 percent, ideally not 100 percent, and then uh, you drive off with it right away versus letting it sit for hours on end at that high state of charge. And so doing this project, how did I, how was I able to do it? What did I use? So there were three, thi three main things. I used the unofficial Tesla set of APIs, or otherwise an acronym known as Application Programming Interface. Um, it's unofficial because uh, Tesla didn't publish it. They don't maintain information about it. Uh, they don't provide any support for it or documentation, but there are people out there who, who do this, enthusiasts who have reverse engineered it somehow, so brilliant. And you can see that there's one page here that has, one side here that has that information and tells you um, how to use these APIs to get information about their vehicles, power walls. I, haven't, I don't have any power walls, but for vehicles, so you can use it to <coughs> send commands to list vehicles, to get information about them, get their state. You can see here, um, you can get vehicle data, um, their IDs, you can get service data, you can get charge state, climate state. There's a lot of information you can get from there. And you can also send it commands uh, to wake up, to unlock doors, lock doors. Most of the things you probably can get from the app, but you could do it from uh, this, these APIs. So that's one way. The other tool I use, the second tool, um, and you could don't have to do it this way, but I found it easy and I can explain a little bit later why, is this thing called Google, Google app, app Script, Application Scripts. And it's very powerful, very flexible, um, has a lot of features. Um, and, and so I'll get into more detail why I chose this. Um, the convenience is, is really awesome and there's a lot of good documentation here um, to tell you how to use you know what the link programming or scripting language is there's reference guides or samples um, there's a lot of like I said there's a lot of tools that we'll get into later and then the, the third thing I used a lot was this thing called Google Sheets which is really just a spreadsheet in the cloud um, which is Google's spreadsheet and Google's cloud um, and I'll explain again why that that was important for me um, you don't have to use Google Sheets, you can use a database, you can use other types of things, but I'll share with you why it was convenient for me. So a little bit about myself, just so you could orient in terms of, uh, is this something I can do, something I want to do? Um, I'm, I'm fairly technical, but by no means am I a professional developer. I have developed in the past, so this uh, comes somewhat natural to me, but I don't think it's a barrier for most people. Um, for me, how I got through it, mostly trial and error, and then I used Google to look up, you know, problems, syntax, whatever. You know, a lot of them appeared to 
be answered on the site called stackoverflow.com. But they're ranging all over. People do this um, a lot, so there's a lot of information about there, how to deal with Google application script and syntax, as well as a little bit about the Tesla API syntax. Not a lot, but a little bit. And I would say that most people can probably do this. It's not super complicated, but I would say it's not for everyone. Uh, I think it's for people who like to tinker, um, you know, fix and problem solve. Uh, and not everything works perfectly. So, you, so you're, you're really in there to tinker. Uh, it's not something you can, uh, you know, 100% rely on. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go into sort of where things get stuck here and there. But it's, it's, it's mostly just a hobby fun type of thing. So this is a little bit about me and, and uh, what you can expect out of that uh, before you dive right in. So getting into the APIs a little bit more as I went through earlier, um, you know, if I look at this, this state and settings, this website's really well organized. Um, for example, if I look at the vehicle data, vehicle data is actually a superset of all <clears throat> the data out there. If I click on here, the response, um, you have to send it two things. And so this is the URL you have to put uh, to send in the <clears throat> in the request. And then you substitute the vehicle ID. I can show you how to get that later. Um, and you have to provide a access token, which you, um, there's a command you can <clears throat> send it with your credentials to get this access token. You can use that from then on without actually using your username and password, um, which itself is kind of dangerous, but you know, like I said, I can get into that a little bit more. If you look at the, click the response here, it tells you how it's, uh, how it sends the information back and you can look through, this is an example of course, but, uh, there's quite a lot of information, right? So scrolling down, you get identifiers, you get information about um, the battery level, the range, the charging information. Um, you know, <clears throat> this, is, well, this is largely what drives those third-party apps as well as the Tesla's own uh, application. Um, and you can see there's, there's a ton of information about you know, heating and what's the temperature like, is the fan on, um, more than you probably could possibly want to use or want to, want to know about. And I, I suspect this list grows every day. Like when they introduce sentry mode, um, that I saw that as a feature somewhere or some as an attribute somewhere. So that probably was added a little bit later. So I'm sure improvements are happening all the time. And so it's good to probably look through this and study, um, study this. What's unfortunate is that there's not a lot of great metadata. And what I mean by metadata is it doesn't explain exactly. Some of the stuff is self-explanatory, um, but it, it doesn't exactly if you don't, if you're not familiar with it, it doesn't explain it in a good amount of detail. So um, sometimes it's left for you to interpret what it means, and it's, it's not always clear. Um, but uh, like I said, most of it is fairly obvious, um, and and you can you know use that to to drive some calculations or whatever you want to do. Um, and like I said, this is unofficial. Somehow, brilliant people were, were able to reverse engineer it. I don't know if Tesla can turn it off at any point. So. That's kind of a risky thing. Um, and you certainly can't call them about it. If you do, they're probably not going to know what you're talking about. And if they did, they wouldn't help you with it. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's it's not really <clears throat> it's not really um, something that's fully supported. It's just you know I think it ties to my earlier comment that this is really for people like to tinker around. And if it turns off one day, um, you just have to rely on you know what you had before, which is perfectly fine. Like I said how it works today out of the out of the box, you know, so to speak, how it charges. Um, it's it's really more than okay. Um, this is just for people who like to mess around and make those little tweaks. Uh, I suspect this is like a, a nerdy version of you know working on the car, you know, uh, you know doing things on the old school ICE vehicles, but you're doing it with software, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, so as I mentioned, you could read some of these, um, you know, things that interesting as air suspension. Does it have ludicrous mode? And some of these I don't even know what they are. What's PLG? Right. So again. There's not a lot of document. You might be able to look it up. But someone may be able to answer it. Um, and some of it you have to guess or think about. Um, so that's the Tesla API. And I could, I'll could i go into a little bit more about the syntax and how you send commands and how things come back and how that works out in the in the script I'll show you later. And then if I go over to the, the, you know, the apps part, the Google apps part, as I mentioned, it's very robust. It has a lot of different... Um, I think you can use a lot of different languages, and you could even use different ways of uh, how you access the scripts. Like you can use, you can deploy it as a web application. You can make it like an add-on to a browser. 
there's there's like a, actually quite a quite powerful and I'm not sure how I found it but I found it by accident and it like I said it it has um, a lot of different features you can even build user interfaces and interact with it that's actually how I first started but <clears throat> I found that I, I just wanted to run in the background I don't want to go to a web page or anything like that so it actually uh, you could do quite a bit with it um, the syntax is okay uh, the examples and the reference I give you is okay it's not super uh, obvious so I did have to do a lot of lookups um, to 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 ask or figure out sort of how things worked um, and then I certainly also had to do another round where um, when I first wrote it it was not very uh, efficient script or code if you will and um, I had to rewrite a lot of things to be more efficient um, in how I how I did some of it. But I, I think those are those are minor kind of things. But um, you can see there's there's a there's a lot of documentation here in terms of how <clears throat> um, how to set some of these commands up and use this in conjunction with the Tesla API as well as the Google Sheet. And you can like I said, you can do a database too. And I even saw this as I scrolled through. JDBC is a connector to a database of some sort. So. Um, you can talk to a database. You don't have to talk to a, a Google Sheet if you didn't want to. Um, like I said, there's a lot of these different options. I actually originally tried this project um, using Hass.io, uh, which is a home automation um, platform run on a Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer, and I tried that at first. And um, I think the the biggest thing how that this kind of didn't work out and a big benefit of how this Google app script works is that um, I have to run that server. So I have to maintain a server, I have to keep it on, I have to keep connectivity to it. Um, so there's good control in that, but um, that can be a bit of a chore. But what I found is obviously with the Google app script, it has its own, it's like an Amazon web service. It, it will run it in a stateful way where you can run triggers, you can set timers for things. So you don't have to be in the business of keeping your server up. Um, now you're obviously are dependent on Google, so if something goes down, whatever. But I think that's you know they're probably much better at doing that than than any normal person would be. So um, the fact that they're hosting this server and I didn't pay anything for it, so it seems that it's a pretty good deal um, that I could develop it. Now maybe if you want to develop a more professional grade, I think there are versions that you could pay for or whatnot. Um, and I did kind of bump into that a little bit, but for the most part, you know, as a tinker, it it works very well. So no infrastructure to speak of to, to maintain. It's just you just write the code, write some triggers, and just let it run. So it's pretty, pretty good.